Welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet Channel. I am so excited to be sharing with you today the toe section of the Holly and Berry's crochet stocking, along with creating our hanging loop. If you've missed any of the other parts of this stocking pattern so far, you can find them all linked below in the Christmas playlist that I have linked. And if you'd prefer to follow along with the written pattern at the same time, that's also linked below for you, so you can go ahead and find that written pattern too. Already in this pattern, we've learned how to seam using the mattress stitch. We've learned how to turn a heel. And today we're going to be working in continuous rounds. For that, I would recommend having a stitch mark as a hand so you can keep that first stitch of the round marked. Just save you having to count too much as well. I'm going to be working with my colour B, which I'm using Paintbox Yarn Simply Chunky, which is a size 5 yarn. And this is shade Paper White, I believe it's called, which is shade number 300. I've got my six millimeter Furls crochet hook. This is a resin streamline hook from Furls is my absolute favorite. I believe that this, um, the Cafe Cran, I think it's called, has now been discontinued, which is such a shame. It's one of my favorite hooks, mainly because I love coffee. Um, <laughs> we are gonna be joining our color A with the right side of our stocking facing us. So let's work out exactly where it is we need to be joining. So we're gonna be joining in the first stitch after our seam, okay? with the right side of our stocking facing us. So here's my seam of my foot, and you can see there's the seam. I've got a little loop there from where I sewed badly, and then I have a chain one, which is this little bit here, and I wanna be joining into a stitch, which is just there. So you've got a little chain one, and we need to go into the stitch itself. So I'm just gonna pop my hook through. I'm not gonna use my stitch marker at this point. Ugh. There we go, and that's where we need to be joining. So we are joining in the first stitch after our seam, and we're joining in the colour that you want your toe to be worked in. I am working in my colour B, which is this matches my um, heel as well. So once we've located the stitch that we're joining into, I'm just going to place my yarn over my hook with the tail away from me, and just use my hook to bring it back through. And then to secure it, we're just going to do a little chain one. We're then ready to work round one of our toe. So as I mentioned, this is worked in continuous rounds. So we're gonna start by working back into the same stitch that we worked that chain one. This chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're gonna reinsert our hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through those two loops because this whole toe section is worked in US single crochets. So each round and each stitch is going to be worked in US single crochets, which is the same as a UK double crochet. And for round one, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So there's the first one and there's our next stitch. And I'm going to work over my tail at the same time because I'm really lazy and I don't want to have to weave it in. No one's wearing these stockings, so there's no need for me to worry about toes being wrapped up in loose yarn. So go ahead and continue to work one single crochet into each stitch around and I'm going to meet you back when you've worked your last stitch before your seam. So work around and I'll meet you there in a moment. So once you've worked the whole way around each and every stitch, you should now have a stitch count of 33 single crochets worked the whole way around the base of your stocking and this is the beginning of our toe. So rather than slip stitching, kind of inserting our hook and slip stitching to join, this toe is actually worked in continuous rounds, which means they're not joined. OK, so instead of joining, we're just going to work the first stitch of round two into that first stitch. So this opening here marks the end of round one. You should have a stitch count of 33 and we're going to go into round two by inserting our hook under the first stitch that we made. Mine's a bit tight because I've pulled my... Uh, end through to neaten up those ends and instead of where we would normally just yarn over pull through and straight through the loop on our hook we're going to work the first stitch of row two we're going to work the first stitch of round two which is another us single crochet so we just yarn over and bring our hook back through yarn over and pull through two and this stitch becomes the first stitch of round two and just like we did with round one, we're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. But I'm going to grab my stitch marker before I go any further and mark the first stitch that I made. 
that way I don't need to count as I go around. I know my stitch count is correct and I just need to work all the way back and the end of round two is gonna be the stitch before my stitch marker. So I've marked my first stitch of the round ready so when I get back to it, I know I've reached the end. So mark your first stitch and then continue to work around placing one single crochet into each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of round two, ready to go on to round three, where we're gonna to start to decrease these stitches. So I'm just working in my final stitch of round two, which for me is the stitch before my stitch marker. And that marks the end of round two. And we now have two rows um, in our second color or our color B with 33 single crochets. And if you're sitting there wondering, Fiona, why are we not just slip stitching and joining? Working in a continuous round means that we don't have that kind of seam that would normally show in um, amigurumi patterns and things where you work in joined rounds. Just trying to make this as neat as possible for us in the easiest possible way. And simply marking that first stitch is the easiest way of doing that and working in continuous rounds. So as I said, at the end of round two, you should still have a stitch count of 33. It's important that your stitch count remains the same because now we're going to start decreasing as we work around. Going into round three, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches and then we're going to work a decrease. I'll tell you more about the decrease when we get there because I'm going to encourage you to try the invisible decrease. So into my first stitch, I'm going to place my first single crochet. So that is number one. Number two, I'm going to stop and just place my stitch marker back into my first stitch that I made of round three. I need to do a few more single crochets. Yeah, well, we have to do eight before we decrease. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the pattern is written that you would work a single crochet two together. So to do a single crochet two together, you would insert your hook, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, draw up a third loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. The problem with that is it looks if I'm honest, it looks a bit janky. You can see the holes, you can see where you've decreased. So instead, I'm gonna encourage you to work an invisible decrease. And what this does is it's worked into the front loops of the next two stitches, no yarning over in between, and it just makes it look like you've worked one stitch and there's no holes where you've decreased. So let's go through the invisible decrease together. So to do this, we're just gonna insert our hook underneath the front loop only of the next stitch. You can see the back loop is still there. We then insert our hook under the front loop of the next stitch. Again, you've got that back loop just behind. We then yarn over, bring our loop through. We only have two loops as we would for a normal stitch. Then we yarn over and pull through both loops. And look how much better that looks than having those two holes. I'm gonna pull that back out and show you once again what we're aiming to do. So we're gonna go through the front loop and then the front loop. So we go underneath one front loop, come back under, pick up the next front loop, grab our yarn, pull through both loops, leaving two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. And we're gonna repeat working eight single crochets or one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches, followed by a decrease stitch, that was two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And at this point, we're ready to work that decrease stitch once again. If you want to do this traditional single crochet two together, you just simply insert your hook, bring a loop up, insert your hook into the next stitch, bring a loop up, then yarn over and pull through all three, but if you would prefer to do that extra neat invisible decrease, I'll remind you again how we do this. We insert our hook underneath the first front loop, straight underneath the next front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up as normal for a single crochet, yarn over and pull through two. I think it looks so much neater than 
a single crochet two together. I will let you know that this invisible decrease is designed to only work when you've got the right side of your work facing you. Main reason being from behind, it's not as neat. So this is why it's used a lot in amigurumi because most people show the right side of their projects in their amigurumi projects. And when you're working in a continuous round like this or in the round, most times you're showing the right side of your project. You wouldn't use the invisible decrease on a normal uh, worked in rows project because you would see that side on the other return. We're going to continue to repeat one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches again. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're then going to work another uh, invisible decrease so we go under the front loop of the next stitch under the front loop of the next again yarn over pull through yarn over pull through those two loops on your hook and then we should have three stitches remaining before our stitch marker and we're just going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches so we've worked three decrease stitches in this round which takes our stitch count down to 30. So at the end of round three, you should now have 30 single crochets. Double check your stitch count before going on to round four, because again, in round four, we're gonna be decreasing again, just like we have in round three. I'm just gonna remove my stitch marker, ready for the start. And for round three, we're gonna begin by working one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So that's one and two. I'm gonna just pause for a moment while I pop my stitch marker back in. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're working that, I'm gonna work that invisible decrease again. So I'm just gonna go underneath the front loop of the next stitch, underneath the front loop of the next stitch again. So I have those loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through those first two loops, yarn over, and pull through two loops. I'm going to repeat that again twice more, so working one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches and then work our decrease stitch twice more. Once you've worked your final decrease, you should have three stitches remaining. So I'm going to meet you for those last three stitches. Just keep working seven single crochets followed by a decrease stitch until you just have three stitches remaining and I'll meet you there to work our final three stitches. So I've just worked my last invisible decrease for this round and we should have three stitches remaining. I'm just gonna work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches and that brings us to the end of round four and we should be back to our stitch marker. At the end of round four, you should now have a stitch count of 27 because we've decreased three times again. So that reduces our stitch count by three. I'm gonna go straight into round five. So I'm just gonna remove our stitch marker ready to begin round five. And with round five, we're actually gonna begin with our decrease stitch. So across the next two stitches, we're gonna work our invisible decrease. So we insert our hook under the front loop of the next stitch and into the front loop of the next stitch along. Yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through two. That then becomes our first stitch. We're then gonna work one single crochet into the next three stitches. So that's one. Gonna kind of mark my first stitch where we did that decrease so I know where we started this round. So we're doing three single crochets, that's one, two, and three. And then we're going to decrease again by inserting our hook under the front loop in the next and the next. So we have those two loops, bring our hook through, yarn over and pull through two. Now we're going to repeat this all the way around to the end of the round. So we're going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches and then follow that by our invisible decrease all the way around. So we're working one single crochet, two and three before we then decrease across the next two stitches. So we insert our hook under the front loop, under the front loop and then pull through two. Then another three single crochets followed by a decrease all the way back and you should finish with a decrease across the last two stitches to get back to your stitch marker. 
So keep working your three single crochets, followed by your decrease all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end of round five. So I'm just working my final decrease across the last two stitches of round five. And now our stitch count for round five should be just 21 single crochets. It's dropping fast now, isn't it? Um, so already, if we stop and take a peek, you can see that we're starting to bring the toe in to finish off this stocking. So going into round six, we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. That's one and two. We can then place our stitch marker into our first stitch. And then we are ready to work our first decrease. So we decrease across the next two stitches. And we're gonna repeat this all the way around to the last stitch. So we're working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches followed by a decrease. Just repeat this all the way around to your last stitch and we're gonna work one single crochet into that last stitch. That's where I'm gonna meet you in a moment, ready to go on to our next round. Just finishing my last decrease and I have one stitch remaining, which is where we're going to place our final single crochet of round six. There we are. And now our stitch count is only 16. Believe it or not, the next round is our final round of our toe. So I'm gonna remove my stitch marker for a moment while we go into round seven, because in this round, we're going to decrease across each pair of stitches. So effectively we're decreasing on all stitches. So we're gonna halve the stitch count down to eight for round seven. So we start by working a decrease into the next two stitches. It's gonna be a little awkward because it's a little bit, <laughs> bit small now. There we are, I'm gonna decrease across the next one. Now I'm not gonna trust my counting, so I am gonna place my stitch marker back into that first stitch that I worked. So we've got two decreases already. Here's the next one. So we're literally just decreasing across all the stitches to halve our stitch count. Another decrease. Another one. Make sure that you're moving far, far enough away because when you're working these decreases, they feel like they're quite close, uh, they're quite far away from each other. And sometimes you can feel like you're working into the same stitch again. So just take a moment to make sure that you're not working back into a stitch that's been pulled. So you're working into the next two stitches. And to move to flip my stocking around. So we're already to the last decrease on our toe. I'm just going to decrease across these next two stitches. And that finishes our pattern. I'm going to remove my stitch marker and just slip stitch into that first stitch before I am ready to fasten off. Now I need to leave um, a little bit of a tail because we're going to use this tail to, to weave around this hole. So I'm just going to use my hook to bring that through move my hook out of the way because as you can see we still have a bit of a hole and we don't want a hole in our toe do we nobody wants that so i'm going to grab my darning needle and just thread my yarn through it and we're going to use this let me change the angle so you can see what i'm doing we're going to use this tail to weave through all the stitches and close that hole so i'm just going to go back through kind of underneath the first two stitches and repeat that all the way around. So it goes around the post of the stitch really. Oops, without working into the row below because that will make a bit of a different look. You can see that that's where we first inserted. So once you've woven through all of those stitches, you simply pull and it creates a really neat close on your stocking. See, that's actually a decrease, not the whole. 
And what you can do if you really want to make it a little bit neater, you can come in and out um, in, a, in a bit of a star really to go in and out of the middle to make sure that you've brought everything together nice and tightly. And there you see it gives you a really neat close. Very simply, once you're happy with your close, push your needle through one of the holes. You have to insert your uh, hand here to grab that. I grab all of that and pull mine the wrong side out. You can just bring that tail through ready to weave in. So get these last two tails woven in and then we are going to move on to our hanging loop. The final section of creating our stocking. I'll see you in a few moments once you've got your ends woven in. I've got my ends woven in. I'm just bringing my toe back the right way. Flattening it out. And there we have our completed toe section as well. And we just have one last thing to finish, which of course is our hanging loop. Now you can of course just sew on a fabric tie if you want to, just a loop of fabric on the inside or the outside to make a feature of it. I'm going to be crocheting my hanging loop on and it's going to be worked around our seam. So I'm going to be using my same size hook, my six millimeter hook, and I'm going to be using color A, which is this lovely red. And we're going to be joining in the top of our stocking near the seam, which is actually going to join in the first stitch before our seam. So here's our seam and we're joining into the stitch before the seam. So I'm just going to insert my hook under that stitch. I'm going to grab my yarn. I'm going to join, as I always do, by simply placing the tail of the yarn towards the back of the hook and just bringing it through. I'm going to make a nice little, make sure I've got enough tail to weave in. Do a chain one just to secure it. And from here, we've done a chain of one. We're going to continue to make a chain of 20. So that was one. Going to yarn over and pull through for two, three, four, five, six, nineteen, and twenty. So now we have a chain of twenty. If you fold it down, you'll see the size loop that you're going to have. So if you want to make it longer or shorter, just increase or decrease the number of chains that you've made to create a different length loop. Now we're going to start work by working into the second chain from hook. But because this is going to be the outside of our hanging loop, I'm going to encourage you to work into the back loop of your chain. So normally, um, as beginners, we would just go underneath that top loop of our chain. But if we rotate our chain so we can see the back of it, the plat side, you can see there are these back loops. And actually, this back loop corresponds to that first or the second chain from hook. The first one's already disappeared. It's just there. So we're going to insert our hook under that second back bump from hook or under the back of the second chain from hook. We yarn over, bring our hook through as normal, yarn over and pull through two loops. And as you can see, once you've worked the first one, the back bumps almost become a little bit more apparent. If you flip it over to the front, you can see your normal chains and you can see the back bump is just corresponding with that top loop of that chain. So we're going to work one single crochet into each of the back bumps of the chain down back towards the leg of our stocking. I'll work a few more so you can see that I'm also finding it a challenge. There we go. But the reason why I like to do this is you can see that the whole stitch is left behind, even though you've worked into the chain. And it really does give you a nice edge or start to any project. So continue to work into the back bump of each chain across and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm just working into my final back loop, which is right by the leg of our stocking. I'm making sure that I've tightened my original starting bit. And there is the start of our hanging loop. So once we've worked that final stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the same stitch that we worked, we came out of that, that starting chain that we drew up. I'm just going to slip stitch over my tail at the same time. We're then going to work a chain of one ready to go into row two. And for this, 
we simply turn our work and work one single crochet into each stitch across. So we're working oops, back up our hanging loop effectively, working one single crochet into each stitch. So if you complete, oh, if you work into each stitch across, I'll meet you at the end ready to fasten off and to sew on our hanging loops. Just working my final stitch and from here I'm going to work a little chain one and we're going to fasten off. We don't need a massive tail because we haven't got much to sew up. I want to make sure that I'm able to weave in those ends as well. So I'm just going to pull that through and get rid of everything. We are going to need our darning needle again. And you can just see I've got to um, you can see I've got a need to uncurl this a little bit. The joy of single crochets. So I'm going to prep by getting my yarn threaded onto my darning needle because I want to make sure we can do this once we because you're going to see that it becomes a bit twisted there you go so I'm just straightening this out making sure that it's not twisted in the slightest and kind of bringing down the end to the um, opening of to the inside opening of our leg of our stocking We've got this end here, which we're also going to use to sew in a moment. But first of all, we just need to make sure that we're happy with how it's sitting because we want it to go through both sides of the stocking. So we're going to go through the stocking, take our needle and just kind of sew through that stitch and through the seam. Leave that tail out of the way for a moment, making sure this hanging loop is not twisted. There we go. And then I'm coming back through the stocking, making sure that I grab the hanging loop at the same time. And then do the same again, going through the next stitch, making sure that I've grabbed both bits, both bits of my hanging loop. Again, I'm going to weave through a few times to make sure that we are happy with how the hanging loop is sitting, that it all looks nice and secure going to be able to support all these presents it's going to be stuffed with a girl can dream right there we go and again once we're happy we can just make a little knot through one of the stitches and then we are ready to weave in these final two ends and that completes let's just pretend i've done that Ta -da. and that completes our hanging loop and the completion of our hanging loop completes the Holly and Berries crocheted stocking. I really hope that you've enjoyed this crochet along and of course stitching up your very own Holly and Berries stocking. I'd love for you to tag me in a photo of your completed stockings or your incomplete stockings if you're still working on them. And I'm excited to say that the next one of the next tutorials that's coming out is going to be for some mini stockings. Now these are super simple and very beginner friendly. There are no turning of heels on this one. Um, but you can make it in, I've made that into a garland. You can make them into stripy ones or plain ones. So yeah, a little bit more of a simplified version, but it will look great alongside. <laughs> oh my goodness. It really does show how giant this stocking is. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed making this um, Christmas stocking. And I hope to see you again very soon for another crochet tutorial or another free pattern right here. So make sure you have hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you know the exact time when a next design gets released. Thank you again so much for joining me and I will see you all again soon in the next video.